Now we're going to learn about acids. I find it kind of interesting that the, the chapter had pages and pages about ionic compounds, and they've got just these little blurbs about acids. I think it's a little bit too brief. Anyway, so a binary acid. A binary acid is an aqueous solution of a compound containing hydrogen and a nonmetal. An aqueous solution. Aqueous solution means it's, the compound is dissolved in water. There are many ways to define what an acid is, but probably the most general is it's a compound that when you dissolve it in water, it produces hydrogen ions. Okay? So when we write the formula, we really should include AQ after the formula. This is what's called a state symbol. It tells us what physical state this compound is in. It could be S for solid, G for gas, L for liquid. Those are the three physical states. And then there's AQ, meaning it's dissolved in water. So we really, really should put AQ in parentheses after the formula. So here's an example. Here we've got HCl AQ. This is a compound containing hydrogen and a nonmetal, and it's dissolved in water. It's an acid. This looks very similar, HCl, but in the gas state. Technically, this needs to be named as a binary molecular compound. It's hydrogen and chlorine, two nonmetals, right? So it falls into that category as well. So if we name it as a binary molecular compound, it would be hydrogen chloride. This is one of those examples where we drop the mono. We don't use mono in the second word. And I don't expect you to necessarily remember that. But this would be named as a binary molecular compound. So um, especially on worksheets, there may be some attempts to trick you. Um, I generally do not intentionally try to trick students on exams. Now, it might feel like that to some students. But what I'm really doing in those instances is I'm, I'm, I know what a lot of the common mistakes are, and I'm trying to see, do you really know this stuff? And so I'll put that on there with common mistakes, not trying or hoping that you're going to get the wrong answer, but just to put it out there because these are things you need to be able to tell apart. This is not one of those things that I make a big deal about, but there are instructors that do make a big deal about it. And so I want you to be aware of it. Okay, so an acid, strictly speaking, is dissolved in water. So how do we name these? Binary acids, there's, remember there's two kinds of acids. There's the binary acids and there's the ternary oxy acids. We're going to talk about them separately. The binary acid names use the prefix hydro before the nonmetal stem. So here, HCl, chlorine is the nonmetal. Chlor is the stem of that element's name. And then we add the suffix ic acid. So HCl named as an acid would be hydrochloric acid. Let me write that down somewhere. Hydrochloric acid. So it's a little bit like a template where this piece in the middle just changes. Binary acids, it's hydro something ic acid. And what goes in the blue box is the first part of the element name. It could be hydrofluoric acid, hydroiodic acid, hydrosulfuric acid, hydronitric acid. Okay? So that's naming those. And then the formulas of acids always begin with H. HCl AQ. So we always put that acidic hydrogen first. You may see some compounds that's, that have two elements and the hydrogen is in first, or you, know, you see hydrogens other places, and what's going on with that. Well, we write the hydrogen first for an acid. And then the number of hydrogens is going to be equal to the charge on the ion that's formed by that nonmetal element. I didn't really leave myself space on this slide. When we put HCl in water, 
it forms ions. It's not an ionic compound, but it makes ions. Chloride is the ion that it makes. Chlorine has a negative one charge, and so there needs to be one hydrogen. If you had sulfur, sulfur has a two minus charge. If you're writing the formula for that acid, you need two H pluses. And so this is just a big old mess. It would be H2S. So the number of hydrogens equals the charge that that element forms as an ion. Yes? Yes. Yep. All acids should have parentheses in AQ after their names, after their formulas. Any other questions? We'll do a couple of examples. Give the systematic name for HF, and then we've got AQ. So this guy starts with H, and we see AQ here. This is an acid. It's got two elements in it, and so we use the hydro blank ic acid. Hydrofluoric acid. Hydro fluoric. It's not hydrofluoric acid. There's no flour in this. It's gluten free. Hydrofluoric acid. And then writing formulas from the names. Here's the name hydrosulfuric acid. So it's going to be H and S. And then we ask ourselves, well, what kind of an ion does sulfur form? Negative 2. So this is H2S. And then we should put AQ in parentheses. Because H2 as a gas is dihydrogen sulfide. And it's a gas that smells like rotten eggs. But if you dissolve it in water, it becomes an acid. So this prefix hydro is our big clue that this is a binary acid. We're going to talk about the ternary acids next. And they do not use the prefix <coughs> hydro. The word acid is the dead giveaway that this is an acid. right? It's like literally spelled out in black and white. It's always going to say acid. The name of an acid always has acid as the second word. Any questions about binary acids? I didn't do tons of examples because there just aren't tons of binary acids. There's only a few of them. <laughs>